Welcome to this instant search tutorial video. This video will focus on the vanilla.js version of our library. The great thing about instant search is that it allows you to build awesome search experiences with powerful widgets in minutes. The even greater thing about the vanilla.js version is that you don't need to rely on any JS build system or framework to make it work. HTML, JS and a bit of CSS and you're ready to go. We will focus on setting up your index with our API client, connecting the instant search library to Algolia, and playing with a few widgets, the search box, the hit widget, and the pagination. Here is the data we are going to work with. It's a simple JSON dataset of 10,000 products extracted from the Best Buy public API. Each object is composed of 14 attributes brand, name, categories, price, popularity, to name just a few. Others are there for display purposes, such as the image URL. To follow along, you can download the file at this URL and push it to an algorithm index. From now on, we will assume that you'll have an index with that dataset loaded. Index configuration is a whole topic in itself and covering it here will be out of scope. Here we are using the PHP API client. We initialize it with our credentials. Then we set up the attributes that we want to make searchable and the custom ranking. If I want to make sure that everything is set up properly, I can head over to my Algolia's dashboard and double check the settings. Everything is looking good, so let's move to the front end part. I've already created three empty files, index.html, app.js, and style.css. For the CSS part, I'm not going to cover it here. It's just basic styling. You will find the file in the documentation if you want to have the same look and feel at the end. We'll first take care of the HTML file. So first we need to import a couple of resources, the instant search library and the CSS file, plus our own app.js and style.css. And then we'll build that the main structure of our page. The header tag will hold our search input that we will later bind with the library widget. Then I'm adding a main section that will hold the hits and pagination. Those are simple div container with IDs that we we'll refer to in the JavaScript when initializing our widgets. Let's move over to our app.js file and play with the library. We first need to initialize the instant search object with our credentials, so app ID, API key, and the index name that we want to target. Watch out not to put your admin API key, as this code will be sitting in the front end and visible to all of your users, so you absolutely want to use the search only API key. Now we'll take care of the search input. In our HTML, we have an input that we would like to bind to the Algolia index. That means that when we type something in this input, we expect instant search.js to fetch results from Algolia. To do that, let's use the search box widget. We just need to make sure we specify our search input ID in the container option of the widget. Let's take care of displaying results to the page with the hits widget. Same principle, we target a container here with the ID hits. We specify how many hits per page we want to receive. Here we want 10. And the most important part for this widget are the templates. If we don't specify templates, instant search will use the default ones. In this case, we want to use custom template for our hits. We can either specify the template directly, like we are doing for the empty template, which is a simple string, or we can fetch it from the DOM, like we're doing for the item template. The hit template will be used for every single hit, using the hits data as the rendering context. We have access to a special child object, highlight results, that contains the same attributes with the addition of embedded HTML tags surrounding the matched words. By default, the API returns the highlighted part between EM tags, so that you can easily style them. You must disable escaping on highlighted values, which can be easily done using the three curly braces. Our template is wrapped in a script tag with the type of text slash HTML so that we can store some HTML code without rendering it onto the page. Back to my app.js file, 
I just need to launch the interface with the search.start method and open the HTML file in a browser. We can see that we already have the search box and hits rendering nicely. Now I can search for instance for Amazon and results are showing up with some nice highlighting in the names as well as in the description. The final widget we want to add is the pagination widget. To configure it, you only need to specify the container ID where you want to display it in the DOM. And now we can head over to the HTML page to see if everything is working as expected. That wraps up our tutorial on how to build a simple instant search result page. Thanks for watching.